Still keep the atmosphere of old city. Soviet building, yeah? Yeah. Ah, I see. Vietnamese ceramic pot. <laughs> it's a big ceramic center. I'm using some special tools. For five glasses of this, you pay one dollar. Hi dear friends, and today we start our next journey to Vietnam. Why to Vietnam? Because on the north of Vietnam already <coughs> are wasting wonderful tea from old tea trees. And uh, we want to visit some region on the border with China and also a region uh, of northern Vietnam, but a little bit uh, on the west from Hanoi. Uh, there are Olong tea plantations and we also connected to a local guy who helped us because I don't speak Vietnamese sadly. So we decided for the first time to visit this place, just uh, walk around and enjoy the place. Also, we first time in this northern Vietnam area, only was before in southern Vietnam. So it's a very inspiring journey. Let's have a look. We already in Hanoi, and my cameraman Nikita said that why are you filming all the time with airports? Let's go to some beautiful location because we just arrived. Yeah, so there's a beautiful location here, is it? You see? The Lotus Lotus uh, Pond, very beautiful one. Yeah, but still not good light, he said. So yeah, so I'm still here. So we're planning to spend two days in Hanoi, look around, and yeah, waiting for our luggage and go. <laughs> actually squares in, in Hanoi and of course it's a square of Lenin because the Communist Party is still ruling the Vietnam and here I like how the cycling people all, all these small electric vehicles all around pretty pretty fun yeah actually Vietnam was colonized by France before which is why a lot of historical buildings in the center of Vietnam and the center of Hanoi city so we will discover today's the city and the opposite side very beautiful old tower which just have almost 1000 year history Well, actually, it's uh, very similar to our name because we called in Chinese Wodo Cha or Wu Cha, Moi Chai company. And so the word Wu Cha, so it's <laughs> almost like our company name. And it's, and it's yeah, yeah, it looks like it's very underground, underground place. So let us look real uh, underground tea house of Hanoi. Ah, Russian, uh, ah, Soviet building, yeah? Yeah. Ah, I see. Maybe 80s or something, yeah? Oh, very beautiful.
I think no one can find this place if you don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, so it's a secret location. And here is some uh, pottery which is originally from uh, local ceramic center when they go tomorrow. It looks like it's influenced, of course, by Chinese uh, shapes. Uh, very different material. It not looks like uh, ceramic from Missing or other ceramic centers like Jen Shui, for example, but still uh, very unique, <laughs> especially like this one, done pretty good, even the lid. Yeah, so maybe I will take someone for collection just to have some Vietnamese ceramic pot. <laughs> Smoke, so I see, I see. To... For the first time I see someone make a hunbei of Shen Puer. And it's really smell very good. They say that it was already uh, smoked. We try in uh, six years aged Ulun. Pretty nice uh, smell, but uh, very different from most of Ulun's I tried. Actually, very uh, many people know the fact that uh, uh, Vietnam, the same as uh, Thailand, the same as uh, China, often can be a source uh, for uh, Taiwanese masters who arrive here and do tea, and after that uh, export to Taiwan because Taiwan have not enough uh, plantations and some tea also bring from abroad and sold on Taiwan. Even some traders call it like Taiwanese tea, but. <laughs> But often it can be from Vietnam or from Thailand or from China. Yeah, so it depends. Uh, yeah, but this is why actually it's important to be on a farm <laughs> and check how the deed done, which actually just returned from Taiwan for the same purpose, like to be sure that it's really local tea. And, uh, and if you just work with some wholesale big, big company, it's, you can be sure it's come from the local source. And here is a very special tea. It's very typical for northern Vietnam, so it's a local traditional tea. You see it made from very big tea leaves, uh, and it's actually recognized as a, as a white tea. And it's called Wan Ma Cha. Wan Ma Cha, actually, Wan is a, is a folk, Ma is a horse, the same actually is in Chinese. And Cha, of course, is tea. So it's regularly brewed like for long, like this tea, uh, uh, the one tea house brewed yesterday. Yeah, it still have very light taste. Maybe we try to brew fresh one. It looks like maybe Chinese shou mei, but even bigger leaf. And pretty, I think, roughly made. Uh, I think just harvest it a little bit, maybe rolled. Because some leaves looks like rolled leaves. Um, but it's very lightweight. I think maybe make a cake from it. It's the most reasonable <laughs> way of consumption. But it's consumed like that, like, like a loose tea. And this is uh, how we prepared this uh, wu ma cha. This, this is foggy horse, yeah, foggy horse tea. Boil the water uh, and uh, after it's boiled, it put there around six leaves of this tea and still a little bit of boiling. And uh, we have a local special drink. Let's see how it develops the taste. But it's boiled pretty long time because the leaf is pretty strong and to open the taste, you need uh, really some time for it. Very unusual tea, and actually ask how do they prepare it. And uh, as the master said, they do kind of a, a fermentation with a, a ferment which takes from the horse. So it's originally taken from the horse. And in Chinese, also this tea called, called jamacha, which means like killed horse. So like it's a really ferment, maybe similar like uh, ferments for cheese when you take it from the stomach of. Uh, a cow, yeah, and still here is like something like that. So they take kind of enzyme, uh, ferment from the stomach of the horse, and use it to ferment the tea.
takhle. So yeah, we just finished our wonderful, wonderful visit to the tea house, <laughs> just underground tea house. Actually, I really like Vietnamese teas and it's very inspiring, very unusual taste. I want to discover more. And now I especially like the weather outside. It's the like evening and the breeze and some fresh wind and a very uh, wet air. Also humidity pretty high. I like that weather and also I like uh, the atmosphere in evening in Asian cities. I really like it. And it's it reminds me of Taiwan, it's like me China. Yeah, then it is special and it has something completely special of course. To have some dinner actually uh, to the restaurant, fish restaurant. Hope it will be good. Interesting that uh, in Vietnam, the same as in China and other Asian countries, now is the Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year in China, how we call it, and they use the same as we use a Christmas tree. Uh, they use uh, peach tree so we got flowers and we just yeah now often on the street you can see uh, the peach trees people throw away because new year pretty soon will finish the same as you see christmas trees on the streets after christmas finished yeah pre pretty interesting tradition and uh, very also beautiful <laughs> this restaurant are focused in catfish so this actually is soup with catfish with banana with tofu and a lot of wild herbs. Actually, I like uh, which we use a lot of wild herbs in the kitchen. And it's uh, very special. Yeah, I never tried something like that. Very funny name of the restaurant. It's called Alishan. Actually, I first think that it's a name of a mountain. Actually, Alishan in, in Taiwan, in Tea Mountain, a very famous tourist attraction. But just one more a, and it will be an Indian restaurant in Hanoi. And also with the slogan "Taste is our identity." Pretty interesting name.
So finally I found a job for myself. Uh, I want to sell ananas here, pineapples uh, here in the uh, center of Hanoi. The best idea I can do. Actually, it looks like uh, any night market in Asia, but for me, because I'm the first time in Hanoi, it looks fresh. <laughs> and I like when you have completely like amazed experience, like very excited experience about something which you already made a scene before, but still feels like something new. Super typical uh, Vietnamese uh, kind of street food restaurant, and especially for night markets, very very small tables, and very small chairs. It looks like a kindergarten, but very comfortable actually, and, and very in the vibe of the street. And actually, yeah, the reason why we sit in this restaurant because I saw so big selection of seafood, which I personally do like a lot. Uh, so yeah, we ordered some shrimps, some shells. Yeah, and we, yeah, I think it's very good to see also when you sit in the street, also enjoying the vibe. Atmosphere is pretty friendly all around, uh, people just uh, smiling. And, yeah, I like it actually. <laughs> my friends and today we're going to a ceramic village uh, we'll look for local pottery studios and local ceramic center how it looks like for me I'm very curious about because it's related to tea we have some tea wear yesterday we already see some pots so let us look and now you'll have a breakfast in this wonderful place just actually the same as in China like some mean how it's in English I forgot like mian 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 it's like a noodle yeah noodle <laughs> okay let's try what I like here that uh, Vietnamese people eat a lot of uh, this herb, which is uh, very fragrant. And I never tried before this type of food. <laughs> a little bit like mint, but not mint. And often it's served uh, also during a lunch or dinner, but also on breakfast. Very tasty. And a noodle with a uh, fish.
not only the type of um, breakfast reminds me China, but also a type of how do they smoke. This is just local tobacco, very strong one. I'm not smoke, but uh, I can say from the smell. And they're also like a, their device, which we use for smoking. You can also see in Yunnan, even bigger ones from a bamboo, or longer ones. So it's super, super typical for Yunnan. And so this is how Vietnamese also smoke a similar way. There's also tradition to make a kind of a tea from this uh, tree, which is called Woi. Yeah, just a tree leaf. I put a few leaves in the kettle and uh, have a kind of a little bit bitter drink, but also very oily and uh, good aftertaste. which is called Banja and in this village it's a big ceramic center actually and they do a lot of ceramics mostly it's just uh, some pots or some daily utensils but uh, there are also some factories which focus on tear and especially like this one because uh, yeah just it's uh, there are some shapes which you can maybe even similar to EC like this pot also material a little bit similar to EC clay pretty Pretty, pretty, pretty good actually, maybe more close to Guanxi ceramics from Qingzhou. Also they do some their own shapes like this. I never see some that, like this in China, it's a little bit different from Chinese and also the material is very different. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also they do some uh, teas in Japanese style like Kyushu pots. And uh, as I heard from the, the, our guide, he said that uh, there's a lot order orders from Japan and pretty good looking to wear and also we have a lot of different materials which I really like some porcelain like this is more in looks like Chinese shape like Shipiao Shipiao Hu yeah we can go inside to have a look for more and yeah, some more Tissue pots like this. Oh, this actually very well done. I have very uh, different range of uh, clays and uh, range of quality. So there's some more affordable ones and also yeah, pretty good. Maybe we even take something for us. Especially I like this clay and also this clay is something completely different. I see something like that in Dehua in Fujian, but still. Uh, not the same. After the showroom, also here is a factory. So let's have a look how the local pottery factory looks like. Oh. So here's the factory and uh, this uh, place is uh, for creating the ceramic mass and they also make it by themselves. Maybe some also import materials uh, from China as I heard, but also mostly local clay. This is kind of green clay, so they create all mixtures here. A pretty big uh, place uh, for production of the clay. This is why you can see in the assortment they do a lot of completely different uh, variety of material. The difference, you can produce really big amounts and for affordable price. Here is the boxes uh, with uh, uh, actually some broken pieces. 
but uh, of course we don't throw away them. We just uh, uh, select it uh, in different uh, boxes because of uh, different clay. And after that, uh, it's sent for recycle to create again a liquid mass. On this factory, everything is made uh, with a mold. Actually, uh, the liquid clay uh, put inside the mold, like this one. And after it's dry, the mold is open and you get out something like that. This is uh, very fresh. It will be a teapot later, but you also need to add other elements of teapot. It's already made also each element a separate. And after that, uh, the master assemble it uh, and also cut unneeded pieces of clay, which also go for recycling back to the mass and again creating the mass. Yeah, so here on this uh, factory, I don't see any potter's wheel. Maybe they do some, but not a big amount. So it's uh, mostly the liquid clay and molding. Then the next stage, uh, actually here the lady, she just uh, washing the already made uh, mold. It's uh, actually the parts of the teapot. Uh, and after the different master will assemble it to the pot. Like here we can see already assembled pots just without the lid. And after it go to the next processing uh, yeah. part. And here uh, they make the cups, actually also with a kind of a machine, just a machine made cup. Very simple and easy, also some plates. And the lady just uh, come to me and show what the final product. So this is already glazed and fired cup. And then the very beginning is just, uh, you need to just made uh, shape actually. Uh, the first they need to dry and all after that a uh, little bit trim. After that, make first firing, after that, glazing and final firing. And we have this cup, actually made also in Japanese style. Pretty good looking. Here is actually the final pining of the uh, cups. For example, but not not only cups. Actually, there's a few masters. Some of them uh, do the stamps. Some of them do the shape. Uh, here, master just uh, polish a little bit polish uh, the the edge of the cup, to make it very uh, comfortable for a mouth when you for lips when you drink. And finally, they create the stamps. After that, cup is drying, glazing and go to the hill. Maybe if, even these cups, they don't glaze. They just fire it as it is, without a glaze. Here ladies uh, create kind of additional decoration of the cup uh, using some special tools, all is uh, health handmade, how to say, and after that let's go for the first firing. Here's a special camera for glazing. Actually after the first firing they spray the glaze on the pottery and it's ready. And here actually you can see how it looks like after a spraying. It's not fired, finally fired yet, but already sprayed by glaze. And here's the final, the holy temple of firing. <laughs> yeah, two kilns. Actually, comparing to the size of the factory, not very big ones. Regularly, uh, it's like four or five on uh, such big uh, factories. But here is uh, we mostly focused on small products uh, like teacups, teapots, and some tea related wear. So maybe, yeah, for this kind of wear is, is enough. It's all working on gas. And here they just, just assembled some cups and we need to also put them, uh, prepare them for the kiln. Yeah, like now it just worker arrived. I think he will start to assembling the layers for firing. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, and he will even open the kiln.
lucky to catch the moment of assembling the teapot and here uh, the, the same lady actually which washed before the parts of teapot now assemble it uh, yeah and, and here she works actually very perfect I see how how professionally each touch each move done and after we see the teapot which all looks the same but it's finally assembled by hand So the factory looks like really have a passion to collecting kind of uh, uh, wooden wooden crafts, especially wood carving, uh, pretty high level wood carving, especially like this. This is lotus leaf, dried lotus leaf, made uh, from a kind of a hard wood, very well done, very accurate and very tiny work, very precise, and uh, looks very natural. Also like this. Artwork. Here's a also fish. Yeah, well done, well done. Really good collection. And also some here we have uh, some places to drink tea. And outside, uh, very scenic garden. Also the fish, even some birds. So they do really have a good taste in uh, Chinese art. In this village there are more than a thousand uh, families uh, which produce pottery and you can find everything from the vases to some decorative items, also pots, also tiware but not too much, mostly it's very common tiware like very simple cups like this, uh, yeah but still it's yeah, called that uh, it's kind of uh, <laughs> similar to Chinese uh, pottery centers but uh, smaller but also this uh, Vases really looks like in the drain ways, uh, the same style. Also, this uh, blue white porcelain. Tea culture really developed in Vietnam. Maybe it's not so strongly developed as in China or Taiwan, but still, in any shop, you can see some uh, tea ware, some pottery, utensils for tea, some interesting design ideas like the uh, metal edge cups, but very good glaze actually. It looks like crackle. Royale or some teapot like this with a metal handle and looks fun but still maybe it's a little bit more primitive but still uh, a lot of varieties and people really drinking tea here. Very interesting place actually, especially I like the architecture and it's called Center of Quintessential Vietnamese Handicraft. Yeah, let's have a look what's inside. Hopefully it's more interesting than on the market.
And here is the exhibition of the best pieces from local artists. Actually, I'm pretty inspired, especially by these ones. This is a metal glaze. Here is some crystal glazes, which is pretty difficult to make this kind of vertical crystals. Pretty interesting. But the most impressive one, of course, these two vases. It's absolutely crazy mixture of glazes. Uh, in China, they often call it uh, Junyao, this kind of uh, glazing. But here, like, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I don't know how do they make it. Maybe they're uh, spraying all the different types of glaze all together. But this looks incredible. In this ceramic center, uh, there is an exhibition of uh, ceramic history and also crafts. And some pieces actually is very funny. It's from our factory, what we see by the shapes of the pots. And they just bring the broken pieces over here. So you can see how it really looks like. Uh, then something goes wrong. And also there are some sharks of different objects and uh, testing of glazes, some other stuff, so some uh, tools for ceramic which masters use to create their artworks, or more, some more glaze testing, also uh, the example of how you can even uh, make a hand painted piece, this is also some examples. Yeah, so pretty basic. Here is a very typical uh, place for uh, ceramic museum because it shows uh, all the processing, how the ceramics made from the clay to the final product. Also some examples of the kilns and also some yeah, types of clay, uh, types of bricks which use it for assembling uh, the building the actually uh, the kilns for firing. On the first floor uh, of this uh, center is a very strange kind of contemporary art exposition. And here's Nikola Tesla and he's uh, saying like, be alone, that is the secret for, of invention. Be alone, that is when ideas are born. Yeah, and here's like very crazy idea to assemble uh, pieces of broken electronics by the plastic kind of glue. I don't know, this kind of abstract, um, I don't know, crap, <laughs> let's go. Actually, it's uh, all the, these uh, pieces assembled uh, just to create the shadow. So yeah, it's not just random pieces, so each piece have its own. Protect our planet here. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. The wings of a man to Here. Ah. Yeah. This ah. Only this, the pink ah, here. Ah, I see. Yeah. The small pieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he and, need to, uh, to like, trim it like. Oh. Mouth here. Wow. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Yes, no, power, no, no, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
accidentally we ordered a fish, but there was not only a fish, and because I have an allergy on meat, so we just need to order the other fish. And actually, it was the same big, <laughs> because we don't have small fish. So now I have a good challenge to finish with big fish alone. And also with a lot of vegetables. Pretty good. And this is a very good presentation of how looks all the shops, most of the shops over here. So it's really like a lot of trash all around. Some use it with the lights, some electronics, some old piano or old um, magnetola from 90s or any random trash. And sometimes you can find something special. Somehow I like this place, I don't know. <laughs> I just like to walk around. So we had a small walk around a uh, local kind of antique market. Not only antique, but all the crap around. Yeah, and actually found a little bit of Japanese chair, pretty simple one, but just for presents, whatever, just randomly mine, randomly bought a little. And yeah, and in the evening, uh, local people like to just fire the trash on the street, <laughs> like in China in old good times. In Vietnam, uh, the karaoke is a kind of a national sport. Everyone sings everywhere for any reason. And even if you can't sing, they still try to sing. So finally we tried it. And I really understand why our friends say that uh, this uh, chada, which just means like a local green iced tea, really can, can beat the coffee, can beat the Coca-Cola or whatever, because it costs like one less one than dollar, like five... 20 cents. 20 cents, 20 yes. cents. So for, for five glasses of this, you pay one dollar. And uh, this is just a strong green tea with the ice. And this is called uh, chanon. Chanon, it means the hot tea. So the same green tea, but without ice, just a hot tea. No ice. And actually comparing, for example, to the uh, tea, like Turkish tea, which also drink often like in glass, it's undrinkable. It's all the time pretty bullshit. <laughs> but this one is great. Great, strong green tea, uh, good aftertaste. And it's, uh, yeah, for street tea, street tea culture in Vietnam, now I really can see that why it's so popular here because it's really can compete everywhere any, any, any other drink it's like yeah five cups for one dollar like <laughs> wonderful
we just uh, drink tea here in the restaurant. What's the name of it? Please film uh, the name of this wonderful restaurant. Arabchan. <laughs> Arabchan. Ah, yeah. Arabchan ah, restaurant. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's the manager of a restaurant, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we will enjoy what Cheers, he join no, our hey, join hey, our hey, tea. That's <laughs> really, I find a one night tea. That's good. That's Vietnamese uh, culture. Yeah. After the meals, so we have yeah. a cup of tea. We like that uh, everyone in northern Vietnam love tea. Like instead yeah. of when we serve, mostly drink coffee. Yeah. But here everyone yeah, drink yeah, tea, so tea. just <laughs> tea is better. It's more healthy. Yeah. 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 Actually, we are leaving Hanoi today. Not so sunny weather as you see, but uh, still, we still can at least enjoy this wonderful view on the typical centrum Hanoi district. And you see very narrow buildings, all very packed one to another, which really reminds me of maybe even uh, like, I don't know, Amsterdam. <laughs> which is my current current home city <laughs> and uh, yeah and what i like here but no one uh, destroyed this old houses because protected by law so it still keep the atmosphere of old city uh, old asian city which is almost disappear in old cities in china for example yeah but here you can enjoy it and uh, and if you go on the street you can see mostly it's touristy shops or it's a hotel or it's a cafe uh, some other businesses but sometimes you can even see like okay paint shop because each small building is a private entity uh, and also a lot of small businesses here all around yeah really enjoyable place uh, hopefully we'll get back to Hanoi later but now we need to go to the mountains to see some key places I hope the weather gets us a the opportunity to have some tea also and now we get opportunity to make uh, some western breakfast <laughs> We just uh, drive a uh, small part of our way. It's uh, maybe around 100 something kilometers is a highway. And after that, we go to the mountain road. And actually the ancient tree gardens, not the gardens, the forest, it's, it's around elevation around 2000 and high. So now we slowly, slowly go closer to the China border and also go higher. 